Okay, welcome back. So, I'm out here at a restaurant. Got a, I think it's four system maintenance. Clean some EVAP coils. On this here scissor lift. As we can see. But yeah, like I say, it beats working off of an extension ladder any day of the week, so a little wobbly and unstable, but can't complain about it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. I've got my coil cleaning kit going on here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I could have used just the regular AC power, but I just got my Milwaukee top off here. And um, let's see here. Literally, I just got this here Milwaukee pack out box. Filled it full of hot water there. Let's grab this here. I'll use that water to rinse the coil. I'm just going to go ahead and Fill this up. Not fully, but just a little something in there. Okay. Go ahead and dilute it with some coil cleaner. Once you dilute it, you know, to this degree, it's it's, it's not going to be very harsh on the coils. It should be decent. Um, okay, so coil is pretty dirty, as you can see. That little center area. But not terrible. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now... this thing up. Just spray it down. Okay. Because I do not need much coil cleaner. All right, so pop this back here. Get all this stuff out of the way. Now we've got our, I love this little rig here. This is gonna be um, Porta Blaster. Okay, so, and one of the most beneficial aspects of it is once again, I can run it right off of this. I can run it directly off of the Milwaukee top off. So we'll just put our output here. There we go. Input here. Ok, 
Okay, it's on there good. We got this here. Hey. Oh yeah, good so far. Take our input line, throw it in the water. It's non chemicalized water. Plug in our power. Ready to rock. That's good in it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You don't need much water to do a proper evap cleaning with this porta blast. It's super efficient. It's just it's got really good uh, back pressure. I'll save that one. Focus keep failing. Beautiful. Yeah, we still got plenty of water down in there, as you can see. I don't even have to fill it up the gallon, just A little bit here. Oh yeah, it's getting off of there. Yeah, so for jobs like this where you have to go up on a scissor lift and you don't want to be moving it over, maneuvering it um, to put your psychrometers in each register, I use this here thermal imager. And as you can see, Got a low temperature of 50 degrees, which is right on the money. I measured it. I measured it at 49 degrees. Oh, there it is, 49. I measured 49 degrees with my uh, uh, psychrometer when I was up there. But so that saves time for sure. And that's for that unit supply. Let's see here, what do we have here? Looking at those supplies there. Low temperature of 50. Perfect. And I'm just gonna measure that against a thermostat. 70, so that's our 20 degree split. Like I said, this thing, um, this guide sense Imager boasts like a hundred to one ratio uh, as far as distance to spot, so it's pretty legit. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I've not tested it, but uh, I take their word for it. So that's a positive thing about using thermal imagers. It's um like they've got a way better distance to spot ratio than any any of the um. Uh, temperature gun, infrared temperature temp guns you can use out there. So, spend a couple more hundred dollars, get a thermal imager, and you have a lot better performance for these types of situations. 
All right, let me know what you think. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.